Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. Today, we have two great stories for you. Let's start with a short one about the 911 dispatcher and his funny incident at work. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. You want to save your new propane tank? Sure. I work as a 911 dispatcher. A man calls because he can't turn his new barbecue propane tank off. There's a risk for fire, so I refer him to our fire prevention services that recommends him just let the barbecue work until the tank is empty. He calls again. He's angry because his new tank that he just bought will be wasted and requires help either from the police or the firemen. He thinks we're waiting for his house to catch fire before we help him. He decides to complain about me to my superior and calls again. That's when I had enough, so I send one fire truck his way. They turn off the tank while laughing out loud on dispatch. He was billed five times the price of his propane tank. And our last story. Manipulative power-hungry aunt torments my family for years, costs her $300,000. Players. Myself, male, late 30s. Sister, three years younger. Aunt, older sister to my mother. Mother, single mom, adopted, no blood relation to my aunt. Cousins, three total, one male, two female. I have good relationships with them, mostly. My estranged father, who'd been living several counties over, is pretty much out of the picture by the time my parents got divorced when I was nine. Due to financial hardship, we were forced to live with my aunt and the nightmare of a household we would soon find ourselves in. My aunt married into Georgia wealth, and you can figure out what that means on your own. She had three kids and eventually caught her husband having an affair. It's a huge scandal. She gets the house, the kids, and a fat payout from the family attorney. This is important because my aunt didn't do a damn thing in her life to earn her money, her house, her lifestyle, or basically anything. She was born poor along with my mom. Under her household, she was drunk with power. Years of therapy have allowed me to recognize that certain people, when in a position of power, get a perverse pleasure in ordering others to do their bidding. She was the strictest of authoritarians in every possible way you could imagine. Chores had to be completed by an exact specific time, vacuuming by 345, dishes by 355, laundry days for my mother and us kids were Tuesday and Thursday, 535 to 755. If it was still running, she would shut the power off for the two units. As we grew older, her own kids opted to stay with their father for full-time custody, and she had them on weekends. Even they couldn't stand her when she was in charge and in the house. As time passed, she got them less and less, opting for alternating weekends as high school activities took precedence over time with mother. For my sister and I, the large six-bedroom house was not ours for the taking. My mom had to pay rent as well as rent for one bedroom, as that was all she could afford on her salary. We had to share a bedroom until my second year of high school. All the while, there was one spare unused bedroom available at all times. My aunt needed this for guests when they stayed over. Not one guest stayed over there in the 10 years I was under that roof. Finally, the church we attended told my aunt to give up the spare bedroom so my sister can have her own room as it was unhealthy for two teenagers sharing a room together like that. That infuriated my aunt because someone told her what to do in her own household. My sister and I got the brunt of her wrath. As my mom's salary was tapped out, my sister and I had to do extra chores like mowing the lawn, trimming the shrubs, cleaning the pool, which we could no longer use without her being outside watching us. My aunt's behavior was becoming more and more outrageous and disconnected from society. For example, she'd always snapped her fingers when she wanted to get someone's attention, but it was getting far more frequent, and she would blow up into a tirade if either my sister or I didn't obey. Her own kids tried repeatedly to tell her that the crap she was doing was wrong, but she wouldn't listen. Eventually, they wanted nothing to do with her outside of the home. She was a tyrant there, and repeated interventions to try to get her to see the folly of her ways would fall on deaf ears. I snapped. All through high school, I had no confidence as a person. I was weak-willed and growing ever distant from friends and society. I just graduated high school and started my first semester of community college. I'm two weeks into my classes attending from home when my aunt drops a bomb on me. You owe me X number of dollars for this month's rent, the same amount for next month's rent as well. 
It's the 27th after all. You're an adult now. You're out of high school and working now, so you need to pay rent. The F? I blew a effing gasket as I yelled back, you can't just suddenly decide to charge me rent because you feel like it. I need 30 days notice. I have rights. My aunt yelled at me some bullcrap excuse that she'd discussed this with my mother, and it was decided that I needed to pay my own rent now. In some miraculous backbone move of which I still have no idea how I stood up to her, I yelled right back at her, if I'm an adult, then treat me like one and talk to me about rental agreements. I'll start paying you rent in 30 days starting the first. I turned my back to her and walked away with my fists balled tight. I was furious with anger, but I walked away. My aunt saw my fists from behind and screamed bloody murder that I was going to attack her. No, I wasn't. She snapped her fingers at me repeatedly on my tail to get my attention, but I didn't turn around. I needed to cool off and clear my head. As I turned the corner, she grabbed my wrist hard, yelling, I'm not finished talking to you. I threw my still balled up fist forward, keeping with my stride to break her grip as I hadn't stopped my momentum. This caused her grabbing arm to slam hard into the corner of the wall that I'd just turned into. She screamed in pain, but I left the house and took off. The aftermath of that incident was that my aunt called the cops on me in an attempt to press charges. She was taken to the hospital and suffered a fractured wrist, and she was put in a cast slash sling. I don't know, as I never saw it and never inquired further. Her story changed every time she told the cops what happened, while my story was spot on every time. I was kicked out of the house and couldn't visit my sister or mom there at the house again. Fine by me, as I didn't want to see my aunt ever again. I was happy to meet my mother and sister at a local diner or outlet. We could be ourselves there and not hostages in our own home. Years later, my mom wised up and got out of that abusive relationship with her sister and moved out on her own. She got a temporary nice place, invested wisely, and with the help of the church, got help getting a place of her own. In 2009, after the housing crisis, she bought her own place that she could never have afforded on her own prior to the market crash, but some good came out of it. She wept knowing my sister and her family and myself can come visit anytime and stay. Over the years, I've been able to forgive my aunt. Not forget, forgive. I've let go a lot of my anger and hatred towards her that she put me through. And when she has no leverage or control over us, she's a somewhat decent person for being a total B of a person. My cousins have calmed down, heard my side of what happened those years ago, and know what kind of person I am compared to what kind of person their mother is. They chose to believe me, and I know I didn't hit her or strike her or beat her across the face like she continues to claim. The Revenge While I have been able to forgive my aunt for what she's done to me, I cannot forgive her for what she did to my mother. Kept her in financial hardship for a decade while she sat on a bank account full of cash and assets, or what she did to my sister. Forced her to pay for damages because the water heater burst while my aunt and mother was away one weekend, leaving my sister at home. She didn't discover the flooded rooms for hours. My aunt's reasoning, it was her responsibility to watch the house. Not the responsibility of the homeowner to maintain and replace the water heater before it goes. Let's leave that upfront $5,000 financial burden before the flood insurance kicks in on a 16-year-old girl. I've had little to no contact with my aunt since I was kicked out of the house nearly two decades ago, but I do keep in constant contact with my cousins. While I'm not going to divulge what I do for a living, I can say that I work with and for the government. I've worked my butt off getting to where I'm at today. I'm known for being truthful, wise, and giving good advice when asked. Because of this, I often talk financially with my cousins, all of whom are money smart and doing well for themselves. They often then relay this information to their scheming mother, who has no mind for business and investments. All that money she got from her housing sale, her divorce settlement, her previous investments is pretty much gone. I spent years planning on the perfect trap, and it took a long time to prepare everything to make sure everything appeared right. I'm not a lawyer and I don't pretend to know the law, but I do know the regulations and laws pertaining to insider information. This is not that. 100% certain of it, and if I ever go to court, I know my lawyer has a solid case in my defense, but this is not a gray area, most definitely. I let slip to my cousins about some future real estate plans near my aunt's new area of living. It may be worth a lot more because of future development taking place in the area. 
All of that was true and backed up by what was in the newspaper and new construction signs that newly appeared on Google Maps at the time. The rest was fabricated by myself, backed up by actual information I looked up on real estate websites and on projects I was working on through my work. The telephone game takes place and a few weeks later, I presume, my aunt starts making phone calls to real estate agents trying to buy lots of land in the undeveloped, crappy area of her new house. Over the course of a few months to a half a year later, she spends $300,000 of her last remaining savings on land hoping it will pay out when the area around it gets developed in the upcoming years. Only HUD slash government slash city doesn't have any plans to develop in those immediate areas. In fact, analysis showing the building in those areas was poor planning and would cost the taxpayers twice to three times as much as the land was not environmentally sound. It was best to build six miles away. This post was long overdue because it's been over two years since my aunt purchased that land that's basically worthless. See, she won't sell the land unless she gets at least the same price she paid for it because she's the owner of that land. Can't tell her what to do on her own land. Sweet karma strikes in a way I couldn't possibly have foreseen. My cousin informed me that the value of the land has decreased significantly because it's not environmentally sound to build anything commercial there, but it's zoned for commercial use. Currently, three of the four blocks of land she purchased are just weed farms next to the eyesore of abandoned buildings or industrial complexes. Nobody can build on it, and nor does anyone want to buy it. Sucks to be her. Best part is my cousins have absolutely no idea that I set them up for their mother to take the fall. These environmental results are relatively new and the perfect cover to say why the project changed location six miles away. Keep in mind, she also would have to pay municipal taxes on the land she owns. Vacant land probably wouldn't be much, but it would still be slowly sapping away more money from her. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.